seven survivors and relatives of victims of a jihadist attack in northern Mozambique have launched an involuntary manslaughter lawsuit against French energy giant Total Energies. On March 24, 2021, extremists slaughtered around 1,200 people in the town of Palma. It's near a huge natural gas facility run by Total Energies. Over 150 people, mostly subcontractors of the company, hid in the Amarula resort as the jihadist militia tried to break in. Now, after days without help from Total Energies, a private security company did manage to launch a helicopter rescue of some of those stuck at the site. But it was then reportedly refused fuel from Total Energies and couldn't return. Now, the group at the Amarula then tried to escape on their own in a convoy. 16 were killed. Now, earlier I spoke to Nick Alexander, one of the survivors, and he tells me more about what he and the other complainants think that Total Energies should have done in the circumstances. They were indeed rescues that they undertook and uh, evacuated people to the nearest major city, which is Pemba. But all of that was post the, the main attack. There was, uh, a, there was a couple of thousand people who were waiting at the gates of the Total camp um, in the days after the main attack. And they were only evacuated over the, the next week or two. The only evacuations and rescues that were achieved during the height of the attack from the 24th to the 28th were those of uh, DAG, the private security company. Considering the horrific details of what you went through, why do you think that more has not been made of what happened at the Amarula? Well, I, th I think it's a, it's um, it's a, it's on the African continent, and had it been in East in Europe or Eastern Europe, uh, this would have been front page news for for weeks. So it was a major news item for a. A couple of days, but you know it's up in Eastern Africa and it's uh, forgotten. And you know we've just uh, wanting to get answers as to why that is. So, what are you and the others hoping to get out of uh, of this complaint besides answers? I mean, you're going up a huge, up against a huge multinational. It's going to be extremely stressful. What practically will come out of this to help you move forward when it, uh, with regards to what you went through? Well, I think a, a couple of things. And, and one big issue is the need for multinationals when they are operating in these kinds of environments that are remote or, or high risk. There's a higher degree of responsibility on multinationals to take care um, and every precaution for their subcontractors and the communities in which they work. It's not good enough to put a fence around your property and uh, the concession that you've been granted and, you know, keep all of the resources and the security uh, to yourself. They were well protected within that concession area, <clears throat> while the rest of uh, us contractors and, and people living in Palmer were under the impression that the perimeter was secure and that um, in the event of something happening, we would be rescued or aided. And I guess really what we're trying to get to is to, you know, why Total did not use the resources that it had available and at its disposal to make every effort to rescue those of us who were in the hotel and at other locations within Palmer. And they had a period of a days before the attack to be prepared for this. And over the days during the main attack, which was approximately from the 24th to the 28th, there were a number of actions which could have been taken that could have saved additional lives and taken people to safety sooner. Do you believe that specifically Total Energies took actions to prevent that helicopter getting access to the fuel it needed to come back for those stuck at the Amarula? <laughs> Well, we, we've heard from numerous sources, and I think in Total's press statement uh, yesterday or today, uh, they have said that fuel was denied to the private security company because they were, uh, they were just that, a private security company, and they were worried of uh, reputational damage for, uh, I guess, supporting an organisation like that. But at that, by that stage, the... 
it had become such a humanitarian crisis that uh, the security company and the, the pilots and the helicopters were involved exclusively in rescuing locals um, and those of us who were at the Amarula. In fact, over the course of four days, they airlifted over 200 people. But with them having to fly a round trip of an additional hour to refuel, on the Friday when we eventually took the decision to try and escape uh, on the border with Tanzania, they were unable to rescue any more of us and they were unable to give us air cover as they had no fuel.